It's a celebration. Veris is getting a new exchange listing, and to celebrate, BitThumb Global is giving away 140,000 VRSE worth 50,000 US dollars as of November 3rd. BitThumb Global Exchange is listing Veris and hosting the contest and giveaway for the launch. You can participate in three events, a trading competition, buying competition, and staking giveaway. In event one, trading, you can compete to have the highest accumulated trading volume with a minimum of 4,000 VRSE traded. The top 1,500 traders will get a share of 53,500 Varus. Event 2, Buying. If you buy 500 Varus or more, you'll earn bonuses of up to 6%. And after you trade and buy, stake to earn even more in Event 3. You can choose to lock your VRSE coins for 30 or 60 days and earn up to an additional 30%. Make your account today on BitThumb.pro using the Varus Foundation referral ID, 8JZNAT. That's 8JZNAT to buy, trade, and stake Varus now. The competition starts November 11th at 9 UTC. Don't miss your chance to earn thousands of dollars in free VRSE. And join us on the Varus Discord at varus.io forward slash discord, where we share the developments of a rent free blockchain economy that can scale to the world. Can't wait to see you there. What's going on, cryptocurrency universe? It's the Bitcoin miner here, guys. Well, in today's video, we're going to talk about airflow, and we're going to talk about the design of this facility and how well the airflow works or doesn't work. So stay tuned, guys. All right. So we did something quite a bit different. We used a hot wall, as you can see. And what happens is the graphics cards are in the back portions of the box, which I can go open one up. And what's going on is the hot air is expelling right here. You can see in some of my other videos where we use a thermal imaging gun, and this is right where the heat is, is right in this zone. Everywhere else is really cool. So you can see it's a little bit reversed of a normal server case with this particular design. You could use a, a, a standard server case and just adopt it. But we use the T2s where we can turn off the fans and it's designed for the airflow to go this way in the server case instead of this way. So, and the graphics cards are usually flipped around. Uh, in this design, we kept all of the heat at the very back so it exits out of the hot wall as fast as possible. Therefore, all the hardware is conditioned as much as possible. And now we've got to think about the airflow. So we've got air conditioning ducts in here, only running at about, when it gets above 90 degrees, it'll kick on. And in the summertime, excuse me, in the winter time, we actually have extra fans up there at the top. I think you guys can see that one fan and we're gonna go ahead and take a walk around the back. As you can see, there's probably another fan there to the right. Yeah, you can barely see the corner of it. So what's happening here is we're reclaiming the heat from the facility. So the hot air goes into this back tall wall where the door is, and then it's expelled out the wall. Right here. So this is how we're getting all the hot air out. Some of it is being cycled through that grill right there, which is being pulled in through the AC system. So this is how we help balance the uh, condition of the space based on how much that air conditioning is drawing. So it's a variable speed motor and it can be adjusted to draw more or less based on uh, how te what temperature we want the warehouse. So we're already producing plenty of heat. It's just a matter of moving enough air. So in the winter time though, it does get pretty cold here. And we don't want to run the servers too cold, like freezing temperatures. We don't want to allow the warehouse to freeze. There are pipes in here and other things like a hot water heater to be concerned about when you are uh, also doing this in a mining center and you're pulling outside air. So we're able to heat the facility merely by using this guy right here. So this is an ink bird. This is basically a programmable temperature a switchboard. Uh, you just plug in a few thermostats. You can put a thermostat on the cold side, the hot side of the wall, and this will switch on the fans based on 
what uh, the temperature is in each room. So if it gets too cold, it'll turn off these fans and turn on the interior fans and blow all this hot air inside the warehouse to heat it. If the warehouse gets too hot, this device will automatically switch it to the outside. And this is just a small 15 inch fan that we can use to balance the system. Uh, in case we notice that there's an airflow problem or something along those lines, you're gonna want a variable motor, uh, a variable fan motor speed that you can actually adjust. You will notice that sometimes it, you might just need more air. Um, you might need less air. So at least you have the ability to use a variable speed controller. Now, air intake for this facility. We saw how the air comes in and cycles around the interior. So it is important to have a decent air volume. I know this place looks pretty large, but you're gonna want a place about three times the size of your server center just for air volume. So it has a mixing location. So the air is coming in in this location. This is a drip. Um, it's kind of like a drip uh, ledge screen. I'll have to get the exact name, put it down into the description. But essentially what happens is there's a flange which is done at an angle, like you can see my hand, with a drip edge. So when water, and when it's raining and it's pulling in the air, it hits that edge and then dr dries, or excuse me, gravity pulls it all the way down where the air continues up. And this has worked flawlessly. We've had some major thunderstorms without having any water coming in whatsoever here. So these are things you want to make sure you do when you're bringing in air into your facility. You've got to be conscious of the elements like the air and so forth. This place happened to be extremely well secure, <laughs> excuse me, sealed. Uh, so we were not getting the leakage that we thought we were going to get. And we did not want to put too many cut-ins into the building because we're going to have to repair it when we leave. So we simply, to get some added air in here, uh, take off a little bit of the pressure we had to kind of jimmy rig a system, which was just took off the flap of the bottom of the air door, put a two by four there so it leaves about a two inch gap and we put a couple filters. Now, something you can do if you're in a more permanent location is you could take out one of these panels, especially if it's not in the front of the building, this is the front of the building, landlord wouldn't be too happy with that. But essentially you could uh, take out a panel and replace it with air filters or do something along those lines replace the entire door with some air filters but the problem is is you know location what people are going to be able to see it doesn't make it look out of abnormal doesn't make it a target so these are all things you do want to consider uh, as you're trying to work with your airflow and come up with your design concepts guys i designed these things for years i have design teams engineers if you're ever interested in building one have questions please reach out uh, my email is in the description or ask in the comments and I'd love to help teach people and be more involved. I love crypto and going forward with the guys. So this is essentially the airflow design for this facility. It's very simple, but yet effective and it works. So thanks again for watching guys. Talk to you later on. See ya. Bye. The next evolution in decentralized tech is here. Veris is a truly free, open source blockchain protocol designed for privacy, safety, open participation, and unlimited scalability. Decentralized financial and communications tech that can scale to a new internet of value and data exchange. Build with us, Veris. Truth and privacy for all. Learn more and join the conversation on Discord.